called a night of friendship. Athletes and uh, spectators from all over the world coming by to explain themselves in, I guess, areas of dance. Table tennis, it is the newest uh, Olympic sport making its debut here in Seoul. In China and Korea, it is a very popular sport for a report we go out to Spencer Ross. Welcome to the Seoul National University Gymnasium, the scene of table tennis competition in this 1988 Olympic Games. First time that table tennis has ever been a medal sport and the crowds are going to be out in droves to see what just might be the most popular sport in this part of the world. Welcome, I'm Spencer Ross, and table tennis competition here in this part of the world is indeed the equivalent of the United States of America Super Bowl, World Series, or Kentucky Derby. On a typical evening when a great table tennis match is underway, people stay home watching on television. The streets are nearly deserted, and they'll be out in droves to watch the competition in this Olympic Games. 64 men are entered in the competition. They're divided into eight specific categories. And the names on the top of the list represent the eight top seeded players in the world. And they will have to get through everyone in their specific category in order to advance along with the second place finisher. The lone United States representative, 21-year-old Sean O'Neill, pitted against Jean-Philippe Gatien of France. This is the third game, 16-10 Gatien, make it 17-10. Left-hander, Gatien rapidly has become the number one singles player in all of France. And it is now 17-11. Betian lost in the quarterfinals of both the singles and doubles at the 88 European Championship. And that point goes to him, 18-11. He won the first two sets and won them easily, 21-12 and 21-13. 19-11 now in favor of Gatian, as you see, serves change after each five points are scored, which is great get right here. And that one is out. 19-12 in favor of Gatian. 20-12. So it is now an opportunity for Gatian to wrap it up. 2013. A loss here will not eliminate O'Neill. But continue to play throughout the opening round. The top two in each category will wind up in the final. So the victory goes to Gatian in straight games. An exciting opening day match took place between 21-year-old Carl Prem of Great Britain, whose father John is the team manager, hailing from the Isle of Wight. He is up against Joe Eng of Canada, 14-7 now in the fourth set with Prem serving. Prem winning two of the first three games and now becomes 15-7. You watch the incredible smashing forehand looping shots of Carl Prem. And a great get there, but an easy put away. 15-8 now. Joe Eng, two years ago, surgery, testicular cancer, removed part of his lung, his thymus gland. Doctor said, 16, Joe, eight. you've got a lot of trouble. And Joe has recovered. A great story. 8, 17. But right eight. now, he is trailing. 8, 17, as the serve will go over to Joe Eng. 818. Take a look at those rackets, the inverted rubber, the sponge underneath. 18-9. Joe Ng trying to battle back. He did win the first set, 22-20. Come on. 1810 now. But then dropped the next two, 21-13, 21-18. 11-18. Eng trying to mount a comeback. The power and the velocity in which this ball travels and the incredible spin, particularly on that overhand 19, looping 11, forehand where the top spin is absolutely incredible. 19-11. You see Prem go to the towel. You only let it go to that towel when service changes. Someone when it's asked one of these young tennis players, table tennis players, you sweat when you play this game? 19, it drips from you at this level of competition. 19-12 in favor of Freem. It is now 12. match point, 20-12. Freem won a silver medal of the European Team, team Championship for Great Britain. Missed that big 30. overhand looping shot. When you loop it that way, 
the velocity and the top spin can help put the opponent away. Still match point. And that one a beauty. Cross court. The victory goes to Carl Preen in this opening round match against Joe Ng of Canada. The serve such an incredible aspect of this game. The variations of the spins that players on this competitive level are able to get off. Watch that spin. Ng just lucky to get it back, setting up that easy forehand looping smash to win it for Carl Preen of Great Britain. So Preem loses the first game, 20-22, comes back to win the next three, 21-13, 21-18, 21-13. An exciting match, plenty more to come in Olympic table tennis. You are looking at the flame on top of the DLI building, the tallest in Seoul, it's early Saturday morning here. Good afternoon to all of you in the United States. I'm Ahmad Rashad, and welcome to day eight of Olympic competition. Now, one of the newest medal sports in the Olympics happens to be one of the most exciting. At first glance, you'll recognize it as ping pong, but the Olympic sport of table tennis actually bears little resemblance to the game you play in your basement. This is a sport of strategy, athleticism, and more than a little intensity. You'll enjoy it and we'll return with table tennis in a moment. NBC Sports presents the games of the 24th Olympiad brought to you by Coca-Cola and your local Coca-Cola bottler. You can't beat the feeling. By Coda Color Gold Film. Show your true colors on Coda Color Gold Film, the official film of the 1988 Olympic Games. By McDonald's, proud partners in the Olympic dream. And by Cotton Incorporated, the fiber company of America's cotton growers. It's early morning here in Seoul, and like mornings everywhere, the people are having their breakfast but somehow I doubt if it includes cornflakes. Welcome back. We're going to take you now to a new Olympic sport, table tennis. Spencer Ross reports. A charged up crowd on hand, taking in first round action in table tennis competition, a gold medal event for the first time. One of the segments, the women's doubles. 48 women entered, placed into six separate groups of eight. The top two finishers advanced to the final 16. A close look at the table, nine feet long, five feet wide, sitting two and a half feet off the floor. The net is six inches high. In the women's doubles, the U.S. team of Bushan and G match up against Marie Rachova and Renata Kasalova of Czechoslovakia. In Suk Bushan, a 36-year-old mother of two, a native of Korea, a one-time a member of its national team, a master of the defensive chopping style. Our teammate, 19-year-old Diana G. She's a Californian, but her Chinese-born father was instrumental in getting her started in the game. I think in the beginning, he wanted, it was sort of like a selfish reason. My mom thought he wasn't spending enough time with us, so she told us, she told him to go and teach us some table tennis just so that he can spend some time with us or else, you know, we'd grow up and leave the house without us even knowing him, my sister and I. So he got started into it, maybe for that reason, but also to develop our character in later life. It has also developed her into an Olympian, and now teamed with Insu Pushan. She meets up with Czechoslovakia's Maria Rachova and Renata Kasalova. They're now in the decisive third set after splitting the first two. Bouchon and G. See Bouchon with that chopping style, defensive, now 17-12. You heard Diana mention her sister. It is a twin sister, Lisa who very nearly made this Olympic team. She played in the 85 World Championships. She's now a freshman at Berkeley. We'll be hearing more about her. Yeah. 17-13. And Supushan goes to the towel. You can only go to the towel on service changes. Yeah. 
Serve will come from Renata Kasalova. 17-14. 17-14. All doubles matches, men's and women's, are played three sets. 17-15. But Shoulder. 17-15. That forehand looping shot, that's twice she has misplayed it. She was third in the European Single Championships in 1984. 17-16. 17-16. Kasilova with some words of encouragement to Rachova. Good get right there, but a little bit long by Insert Kushan. 18-16. First two finishers in each seated group will advance to the final. So a defeat here does not eliminate either of these two groups. 19-16 now, service chain and Diana G for the United States. And Suk Bushan will serve it. And Suk holds a racket in the pen hold style, kind of like you hold a pen. The other three players use what you call the shake hand, like you're shaking hands. It is now match point. 15, 15. Good get there by Diana, but the forehand looping shot wins it right there, and the Czechoslovakian team comes through with a victory here in this opening round match. Take another look at it right here. Diana playing defensively. Here's that forehand loop with the great top spin, which makes it so difficult to return. And this one just a little bit too tough for Insu Bouchon, the defensive master, to get back onto the table. So a victory right here for Renata Kasilova and Marie Rachova over Insu Bouchon and Diana G. It goes three sets, 21-18, 11-21, and 21-16. So the excitement underway. As the song goes, we've only just begun table tennis competition from the Olympic Games. Now you see the difference between ping pong and table tennis. Now when we come back, American Connie Young in the sprint cycling semifinals as the games of the 24th Olympiad continue. We're back here in Seoul where Lutz Heslick has come to try to claim the sprint cycling gold medal that eluded him in 1984 when East Germany boycotted the games in Los Angeles. Heslick has made the finals, and we have that race for you now from the Olympic Velodrome. The ride for the gold medal about... This is a Seoul train station where thousands of people are leaving to visit their family for Chuseok, the Korean version of Thanksgiving. Maybe this little girl is off to see her grandparents, maybe for the first time. Now here's a sport most of us have tried from time to time, table tennis, or we usually call it ping pong. But don't be surprised if what you're about to see bears no resemblance to the game you've played in your basement. Let's go to Seoul National University Gymnasium for some tennis. Table, that is. Welcome to the Seoul National University Gymnasium. Table tennis competition continues. Excitement indeed. To paraphrase George Orwell, all nets are equal, but some nets may be not as equal as others. So you've got to make sure they are. Trevor Openshaw, one of the officials, going through the measuring apparatus to make sure that net is indeed six inches off the table. You need perfection. You're going to see a great deal of it throughout the table tennis competition here in the Olympic Games. I'm Spencer Ross, and speaking of perfection, the 1988 reigning World Cup champion, Andres Gruba of Poland, putting on quite a performance in the competition against an opponent from India, Sujay Gopati. An easy victory in the first two games in the best three of five singles competition. But you ain't seen nothing yet, as the man once said. Let's pick up the action in the third set with Gruba out in front. Gruba close so many times, but his crowning achievement winning the World Cup this year. 
now leads here. 10 14 in the third game. Best three of five. So I'll play some defense. We'll turn on some offensive show for you. something but my mouth was wide open just staring in amazement at that marvelous rally and the crowd loved it and suited so did the two competitors 15 10 the serve will now go over to Andres Gruba 1988 world singles champion he leads 15 10 he won the first two games from Sue Jacob of India and now he's looking to put it away. 17 10. Gruber played in West Germany in the years 1985 through 87. One of the few Polish athletes to be allowed to live and train outside of the country. And he finally started to relax after winning the big one, the World Championship. He leaves here. In this third game, I'm going to watch it. And the crowd just watching too. And look at the smiles on the faces of this crowd here at Seoul National University Gymnasium. We come now to match point. 12-20. Thirteen twenty. He looks like he is relaxing, enjoying himself, having a wonderful time, and thrilling this crowd. 30, and that 20, is 20. match point and game. It is all over. A straight set win. The World Cup singles champion, Andres Gruba of Poland. He's got a great opportunity at gold, and you saw just why as he came away with that easy victory and Gruba made it kind of look easy and made it so much fun for everyone here in attendance. Now this is not match point. This is the one prior. Take a look. Just returning. Just playing defensively. Sharpening his reflexes. He knows he's got this match won. He's having some fun. <laughs> Here comes the table. He hits the wall. And it's going to get in his way right here as he comes back. And he knew it was there. And it, what are you doing there? That's the offense. It is down. But Andres Gruba, a straight game victory over his Indian opponent, Sujay Gurpati. This is the World Cup champion and a great candidate for gold here at the Olympics. Well, that's sort of the way I played as a kid. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll tell you about the dawning of a new day in Korea. Sports that was added to the Olympic program this year is table tennis. Most people thought the men's singles title would be a battle between two of China's foremost players. But that's not the way it turned out. Not one, but two Koreans made it to the final, a fact that had Seoul National University Gymnasium rocking. So let's go to Bud Collins. Spencer Ross and Sean O'Neill for the men's singles gold medal match. Seoul National University Gymnasium, excitement in the air, a capacity crowd on hand. The finals of the men's 
table tennis competition in singles. I'm Spencer Ross along with Sean O'Neill, captain of the United States men's table tennis team. Bud Collins alongside. A pair of Koreans are shooting for the gold. Yunam Q and Kim Kitek. They've now moved into the third game. Kim Kitek took game number one. Yunam Q took the second game. Now a pair of Koreans battling it out, Sean O'Neill. The intensity that these two players have exhibited. Are you surprised? Not at all. This is for an Olympic gold medal, and everyone should realize that. They've been roommates for the past week. They want to beat each other as bad as they can. Okay, and as far as uh, Yunam Q is concerned, he is the Asian Games champion. But, Collins, you've watched this young man. We've been watching him throughout this tournament. Does he remind you in particular of any great athletes you've ever seen before? Well, the ubiquitous Mr. Yu. First of all, I'm a newspaper guy. He uses the pen holder grip, so I like that. But he does remind me of two champions, marvelous Marvin Hagler. The way the left hook goes cross court. And then John McEnroe, he can hit it inside out, and he's a knockout puncher from Pusan. A knockout puncher from Pusan. Yunam Q is 20 years of age. As I mentioned, he did win the Asian Games Championship, and he is indeed a hero in his nation of Korea. Kim Ki Tech. There's a lot of rooting interest in this young man. The right-hander can really fire the ball, and he is 25 years of age. Kim Ki Tech hails from Seoul. So the crowd is kind of getting on his side, and as I mentioned, game number one went to Kim Ki Tech, number two to Yoon Nam Q. Let's pick up the action right now in the third game. It is Yoon Nam Q opening up a 12-7 lead here in this third game, all even at one game apiece. Oh. We call that the wiggle there. And he certainly wiggled it. It is now 12-8. Here you see Yudem away from the table. Kim Kitak puts a drop shot and tries to fake him out with all these extra swings. And that's the wiggle. And with that inverted rubber, you're practically carrying the ball. That, that ball almost sticks right to the racket, doesn't it, Sean? Um, not really. You're only allowed to touch it on one shot, so he does leave, it does leave the racket quite fast. Kim Ki Tech, he won the first game, 21-17. It was Yunam Q, the Asian Games champion, winning the second, 21-19. And here is Kim Ki Tech on his first of five services. Watch it! Ooh. How much weight are these guys losing, Sean? They're drenched. I would think at least, at least three or four pounds. Great recovery by oh. Yunam Q off the tick off the side of the table. You again goes for the little wiggle. He tries to get on with his body. Tim Keetuck trying to battle back here in this the third game. And a little visit to the towels, and which is really uh, against the rules. It can only be done after five service points, but at that point you saw the uh, scorekeeper come over and kind of wipe off the table. There's a lot of perspiration perhaps dripping on that yeah. table. Sean. Even the table's sweating. <laughs> oh. Oh. Straight power from both players. Gene MQ finally putting in the big forehand loop. Here we see it again. Great block. Power punch, Yunam Q with the heavy tops and the Kim Kitak can't cover. That's all you can really do if your pen holder is blocking that backhand. Exactly right, Spencer. Yunam Q has the lead. And he has the service at 15-10. 16-10. 16-10. Everything is working now for Yunam Q. He is 20 years of age. Kim Ki Tech, who is a native of Seoul. Watch it! Crowd has been kind of on his side. Well, the crowd can't lose in a way. They're both Koreans, but you're right. Kim Ki Tech is the hometown guy. With his back to us and his back to the wall. 18-11. 18-11. Yunam Q hails from Pusan. 
The Pusan powerhouse. That little guy. Whoa! Oh! 11.19, Kim. That forehand, Luke, is that going 100 miles an hour, Sean? Easily, and what he puts on the second one after the big one to the forehand, his side spin makes it even more difficult to track. Two points away from winning this third game. And it is now game point as it becomes 11-20, the serve to Kim Ki Tech. And that is it. Game to you, The power, 11. the strength, the talent of you Yunnan Q two games to one. wraps up this third game and gives Yunnan Q a two game to one lead in his fight for the gold. As we take a look at match point once again, has he almost just about given up right here, Kim Kitak? I think he has. He's standing straight up on the backhand block. He doesn't seem too disappointed. He's going to be thinking about this fifth, fourth game now. Fourth game is coming right up, and right here through three games, Yunnan Q has taken a two game to one lead in this best three out of five in the battle for Olympic gold. has taken a 13 to 10 lead in this fourth game. He'd like to wrap it up right here. Woo! 13-11. Kim Kipek has other plans on his mind, though, guys. Here we go. Wide out to the front. You makes a great return right off the bounce. Kim just sits right on it. Incredible reaction. But there was Kim Kipek putting it away. It is now 13-11. Listen won to that the first chant. Game. Kim Ki Tech, Kim Ki Tech. I think I'll chat a little too. I'd like to see him get into this match. KKT. 14 ah! 11. And the service will go over now to Kim Ki Tech. The crowd is chanting for him. He is from Seoul, while Yu is from Pusan. He's a Seoul brother, and they want him to come through here. And he will get the serve. He's 25 years 11, of age. 14. His opponent, Yunnan Q, the Asian Games champion, is 20. Oh! 11.15. The power. Here we see Yunnan Q with a great backhand. He steps around like all pen holders want to do. Kim Ki Tech tries to kill it in just a little too long. And Yunnan Q is returning all those backhands. 15. Now, Kim has fought back. He lost the first six points of the game. I thought he was dead then mm -hmm. because he'd lost actually 10 straight the last four of the previous game. 13 15. He continues the comeback, trailing now only by two, 13 15. He must win this game to keep his hopes alive for Olympic gold. Here's the replay. Kim also stepping around the backhand quite often, goes wide to use forehand. I don't think you can believe Kim went for that shot. He put in a great forehand loop. Kim continues to step around. Here we see it going right back at the strength. And he gets away with it. And he is now within one. Kim Kitek at 14-15. A time he couldn't get the backhand on the table, and suddenly we are even at 15 all. He caught up. Here we see the replay again. Kimmy Peck with a nice short serve. Yunnan pushing it wide out to the forehand. Blistered it right back to his backhand. There it goes the chant once again. The umpire says quiet. Silly umpire. Kim Keith Heck, why not? <laughs> I don't have to be neutral. Uh, what a shot. A great forehand loop of Yunnan Q. That ball was about the size of a dime inside the baseline to go in for the winner. Seeing it is difficult enough. More than 100 miles an hour. It travels, and it's only nine feet away. What? 17, 15. A little nervous there? Uh, very difficult to see the little topspin that you hides with his body on the serve. You see, just flipped it a little bit too long. Mm. 17, 16. 17, 16. And you say you read you read the spin off the contact, not when it hits your side of the table. Not only off the contact, but we also try to listen to it. But with this crowd in the background, there's no way you can use that. 
You see him shielding it with his body. Kim Ki Tech, great flip right back into the body. 17 all and the serve for Yunam Q. He leads two games to one. Backhand to backhand, Yu steps around first. Proves too much. 17, 18, Kim. So the service will go over now to Kim Ki Tech. Yunam Q with the lead. Kim Ki Tech trailing in this game. 17 18. 17, Best three 18. out of five, and Kim Ki Tech is down one game to two. That's 17 call. 19. Well, let's check it now. Let's see what the referee is going to rule. What happened, Sean? Okay. It was 17, a net serve. 18. Both 18. the players Play saw it. You, 17, perfect 18. sportsman, would not take the point regardless of what the referee says. He said it hit the net. And he waves off the point. We've seen this happen before in this tournament. Jorgen Pearson of Sweden did it. Oh! That's a backhand! There's the backhand. He smashed it away. And right here, Yunam Q has taken a 19-17 lead in this fourth game. 25-year-old Kim Kitek has his back up against the wall. He is down 17-19. This is the fourth game. Yunam Q is up two games to one. Kim Kitek with the serve, and that is a let. First game went to Kim Kitek, but Yunam Q has his back to you. Won the next two. 18-19. I wouldn't have believed that Kim could come back, losing the first six points of the game. But he has indeed battled back. The deficit is now won. 18-19. Yunam Q, the Asian Games champion, a national hero. He's only 20. The veteran Kim Ki Tech, and the chance have been mostly for him. He is from Seoul. <laughs> so we are even at 19 all. Here you can see Kim using his speed to put you wide to the forehand. You get to the ball too long again. Two points more, and he'll go into a fifth game. One point more. 2019. It is game point. 2019. This crowd, when they first came here, couldn't quite decide who to root for. They knew a Korean was going to take home gold, and another one was going to take home silver. Play, please. 2019. They're taking sides. Kim Kitek. Referee said quite. Oh. <laughs> what a way to save a game point. Here we see UNMQ. Safe opening. Steps around, just rips it wide oh. of the forehand. The power. We're even. It is now deuce. We're even at 20 all. And but Collins Kim Ki Tech fan club continues to chant. KKT. I gotta shorten it up because they're in a deuce situation. <laughs> oh. Oh. It 20, is now 21. match Kim. point. Metal point. And Kim Ki Tech knows it. He's definitely going to take all the time he can. You see him wiping off his feet. Make sure he doesn't slide at all on this next point. Look for him to try to get a very strong opening, then finish it off with a smash. The lead belongs to Yunam Q, and Kim Ki Tech is trying to send it back to Deuce off the serve. Oh! oh, oh, oh. He did it. 21 all. Kim Key Tech will make me a wreck. Here's the smashes. Another quick smash. Final one. Can't even see the ball go by. Oh. More than 100 miles an hour indeed. And here is Yunam Q. We're at Deuce at 21. Oh, what a kick. 21, 22. He just Kim. punches that backhand back. And once again, it is metal point. Kim Ki Tech. I don't know. You got to keep it up. You got to keep it up. Kim Ki Tech. Yunam Q is the man who is one point away from a gold medal. Oh, is that a psych job? He wanted to think about it a little bit more. The referee was correct. 
and disallowing him to go to that towel. Only after five service points can you do it. Game to you, 23-21. He wins the match three games to one. Unanimous for you. Okay. Emotionally rough over the fact that he has taken home the gold medal here at the Olympic Games you to go along game, with that Asian Games championship. And a moment 11, by himself to contemplate the victory. Here's the final point replayed. Kim ki with a high toss serve. You getting an opening, wide out, gold medal. Gold medal indeed. And it goes to Yunam Q of Korea. The silver goes to Kim ki of Korea. And the bronze medal to Eric Lind of Sweden. I'm Spencer Ross, and to no one's surprise, the Asians and the Europeans have dominated play. A big surprise, though, the play of Canada's Joe Ng, a study in courage. And not because of victories for Joe Ng, but just because he is here. All hail the conquering athlete, the winner. But what constitutes victory? What makes certain accomplishments more notable than others? Winning Olympic gold is certainly not, nor should it be, a matter of life or death. But for Canadian table tennis player Joe Ng, just being here is indeed a victory, one of life over death. Just two years ago, doctors told him he had testicular cancer. They told me uh, it didn't look that good at the time and that I'd have to have some surgery done and, and some chemotherapy. Uh, they didn't give me an exact figure, uh, but they told me the chances weren't... Uh, not that, that good. In November of 1986, Joe Ng underwent surgery to remove his thymus gland and part of his upper left lung. Painful sessions of chemotherapy followed, the last not quite two weeks before the 87 World Championships. It was 10 days after my, I got out of the hospital. Uh, I decided I wanted to get back into the swing of life and what I was doing. Still weakened by chemical treatments, Joe returned home from the world's a greater potential loss. That of life threatened once again. They told me uh, that my tumor marker levels, which uh, mark all the, uh, uh, the cancers, they mark to, s to tell you whether or not they're dividing in your body. They told me it was going up, and which meant that uh, I had to uh, go back in for more sessions. But not this time for Joe Ng. This time in the table tennis vernacular, Joe Ng tried another form of attack. I did some work with uh, Nadine McCaffrey, and she's a sports psychologist, and she works uh, specifically in mental imagery. And uh, I was just imagining, like, the cells leaving my body and the cancer cells uh, being flushed from my body. In effect, they told Joe Ng he had a certain period of time left, but Joe had other thoughts. His mental imagery program, combined with a regimen of vitamins and herbs, and the cancer, it disappeared from his body. The doctors left confused. But the reality is Joe Ng has recovered, recovered enough to emerge from his own form of therapy to become the Pan-American table tennis champion. This is a reality. And so is the fact that Joe Ng will not take home a medal here in Seoul. I'm a winner already. <laughs> a champion indeed, whose message in many ways far greater than gold, silver, or bronze. It is the greatest medal of all, that of life. Remarkable story of a remarkable young man who matched up in his final singles competition against Yu Bang Vang of Hong Kong. One might say things do not come easy for Joe Wang. Seemed to have this match wrapped up, beating his opponent from Hong Kong, Yu Bang Vang, in the first two games, 22-20, 21-17. But Yu Bang Vang, the oldest competitor in this tournament at 38, came back to win the third game, 21-19. And then in the fourth game, Joe Ng seemed to have it wrapped up again. Led 21-7, 20 to 17. And Joe had a problem with his service. Missed two serves. It got tied at 20. And Yu Bang Vang won at 26-24. Right here, Joe Ng with a two-point lead in the fifth of the decisive game. 15-13. It is now 15-14. We've had five ties in this game. Numerous lead changes. Both players with records of two and four in the preliminary competition. And they tied again. Now 15 all. 
sixth side. Good forehand cross court looping shot by Joe Wang to give him a 16 to 15 lead. And once again, we're tied at 16. Both victories for Eng and Vaughn coming against similar opponents. He tied again at 17. And that's the way it has been throughout this match. Of course, as usual, very warm here at Seoul National Gymnasium, the university. Air conditioning is not put on. They have it here. If you can't put it on while you're playing table tennis, it will affect the trajectory of the ball. And right here, Joe Wang has fallen behind by a point. And now by two. 1917 incredible comeback for Yu Vang Vong of Hong Kong now two games to nothing he now leads in the fifth game 1917 and now he has three match points just like Joe Eng had in the previous game and it is all over Yu Vang Vong completes a marvelous comeback coming from two games back to beat Joe Eng after Eng wins the first two sets, Yuvang Vaughn comes back to win 21-19, 26-24, and 21-17. So we take another look here at match point. The forehand looping shot and Joe Eng wide with the return, and that will wrap it up. Yuvang Vaughn comes away with the victory. It takes him five games. Joe Eng winning two of his seven matches here at the 1988 Olympic Games. Yes, indeed, he will not go home with a medal, but more importantly, Joe Eng, recovering from cancer, can look forward to 1992 and the Olympic Games once again. The Olympic secondary, really just being able to look forward to 1992 for Joe Eng is the most important story. Quite a story, Joe Eng. He doesn't win a medal but he is a winner. We'll be back with more coverage of the games of the 24th Olympiad, including a welcome home fit for a king after this.